So there are so many reasons why I like Song of Solomon. I, I absolutely love the book. It's so complex and the characters are so intriguing. But I think chapter 13 is really the reason why I love it so much. There's so much in this chapter as far as uh, depth and characterization. So uh, chapter 13 is... A flashback to chapter 6. This is right after Milkman um, broke up with Hagar, and there's that conflict where um, they're in the apartment, and he says, I'm ready to die, go ahead and do it, and she can't go through with killing Milkman, as he suspected. Um, as, as he suspected, he knew she wouldn't. And then she's kind of left there just broken and dead inside. So Milkman says, I'm ready to die. And Hagar is left dead inside. And and of all people, Guitar's the one who comes and picks up the pieces. And uh, you don't expect it, but she gives us this kind of taste of good and bad in everyone. And here is the person who's now evolved at this point as the villain of the story. And she throws us just a little reminder that you know what? Guitar's not a bad person either. They just have had a different life. They have different values and a different structure. And so we can't forget, even though he's trying to kill Milkman now, and he's obsessed with this avenging the the 16th Street bomb, uh, Baptist Church bombing, Guitar, at the heart of it, remember, he's the one who took Milkman under his wing. He's the one who did so much uh, for Milkman, that there is still good in him. And I think the passage on page 306, uh, starting on 305, gives us so much insight into the character of Guitar, but it's also such a an important life lesson as far as human value. So I'm going to just uh, go back and read that with you. Okay, so uh, Guitar had come and he picked... He, picked up guitar, um, Hagar, he borrowed a car, um, and they're in the car, and he speaks softly to her, in contrast to Milkman always kind of being at her and confronting her. Guitar speaks very softly to her, and he says, you think because he doesn't love you that you're worthless? You think because he doesn't want you anymore that he is right? that his judgment and opinion of you are correct? If he throws you out, then you are garbage? You think he belongs to you because you want to belong to him? Hagar, don't. It's a bad word, belong, especially when you put it with somebody you love. Love shouldn't be like that. Did you ever see, and I love this, listen to the imagery here. Did you ever see the way the clouds love a mountain? They circle all around it. Sometimes you can't even see the mountain for the clouds. But you know what? You go up to the top and what do you see? His head. The clouds never cover the head. His head pokes through because the clouds let him. They don't wrap him up. They let him keep his head up high, free, with nothing to hide him or bind him. Hear me, Hagar? And he spoke to her as he would to a very young child. You can't own a human being. You can't lose what you don't own. Suppose you did own him. Could you really love somebody who was absolutely nothing without you? You really want somebody like that? Somebody who falls apart when you walk out the door? You don't, do you? And neither does he. You're turning over your whole life to him, your whole life, girl. And if it means so little to you that you could just give it away, hand it to him, then why should it mean any more to him? He can't value you more than you value yourself. So think about that as a life lesson, especially that last line. He can't value you more than you value yourself. It's, in a way, telling all of us that... In truth, real value comes from the inside and not the way other people see us or judge us. And if we place too much value on 
the way other people see us, then we're only a reflection of their values and not our own. So from the least likely of sources, here is Guitar telling us there's value in everyone. You just need to remember your worth uh, in, from the inside out. Even Hagar, this broken, left for dead uh, woman who, who, who is just kind of like, like I said, left for dead, dead on the inside. And remember, Macon made people dead inside, and Milkman has followed suit. And of all of his trying to run away from his father's legacy, he has, in this relationship, become his father, leaving Hagar a shell of herself. So who's left to pick up the pieces? First guitar trying to, and now Reba and Pilate, the two strong women, are going to pick up the pieces. Reba shows the value of Hagar in that her most prized possession, the ring that she won from the contest, from the Sears Roebuck contest, her only thing of value, her most valuable possession, she sells it. Why? Because she values Hagar more, and she uses that money to take her, um, uh, what we would call today, in, in a binge of retail therapy. But it doesn't work, and... Uh, chapter 13 ends with Hagar's death, and we're left to question the cause. Is it chills? Is it the illness? Or is it actually a broken heart and she has lost the will to live? Is that possible to die of a broken heart? And is Hagar an example of that? Um, but then we see an interesting contrast of values in the dead family in the post-death aspect of Hagar. Now, remember, Milkman's off uh, doing his own thing, so he's not even there to to know, let alone care, about the woman he loved uh, and her death. So uh, there, there's this kind of two schools. Ruth steps up and coerces Macon to pay for the funeral. Is it a selfless act? I'll argue no, it's a forced act because his objections are clear. He does not want to do it, but Ruth kind of forces him to. And Ruth is kind of calling upon him because, remember, the money comes from Ruth's family, not from Macon's family. So she's saying, it's the right thing to do. We need to do it. Contrast that with the values of the other side of the dead family, Pilate and Reba, both living in squalor, both don't have any value for money. Why do we, and, and so uh, their emotional tribute to their daughter slash granddaughter at the funeral gives us insight on why we actually live. Do we live for wealth and power or do we live for love? And Pilate, the matriarch of the family, is refusing to let Macon's values of money first, money and power, control the mores of the dead family. And instead, she's saying the real essence of the dead family and the real essence of why we live is for love. And this this kind of chapter puts that all together. Uh, go back. So, so use it as a, a kind of bookend in the chapter. Pilate and Reba speaking about the value of love and the power of love, and Guitar speaking about the power and value of self-love and understanding your value comes from within and loving yourself. How can somebody love you if you don't love yourself? So we really have this chapter 13 love chapter, which, uh, biblically speaking, the most famous chapter dealing with there's there's two kind of um, books that deal with love and the title song of solomon is meant to be uh, a tribute to the book in the old testament of the bible song of solomon which talks about earthly love but then there's another chapter in the new testament it's in first corinthians chapter 13 it's referred to as the love chapter where it lays out 
all of the aspects of love. And you're probably familiar with love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast. Uh, that kind of famous chapter, which we often see at here at weddings, etc. And we're getting chapter 13 of the book purposely meant to be the love chapter and expressing the value of love through both the beginning and the end of the chapter and then uh, dealing with death, but true life comes in love, loving yourself and being loved. What a, a wonderful symbolic um, framing of a chapter that Morrison does here. Okay, so now we're ready for the big finish. I'm going to pair chapter 14 and 15 because they kind of morph into one another as we get to the climax of the story, and it's about to all make sense. All of the theming of flight, all of that is about to come together into an unfolding of the legend and the lineage of the dead family and Milkman and his new existence and all of that stuff kind of comes clear at the end of the story in the ultimate framed narrative. <laughs> 